here. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Mindset Monday. My name is Paul Crud. I'm here with the fabulous looking Cheryl Morley. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm excited to be here today. We're going to talk about mindset, uh, Cheryl, which I know is your favorite topic. Oh, yeah. Yes. No. And uh, Cheryl and I have had long discussions about this call today and oh. um, the topic of fear and um, uh, and such. So we're, we're going to get started, just kick it off with, with notes here that we have on that site. Again, if you go to hccc.info, there's a big link that says click here for all the recordings. You can go there and all the notes are um, there under today's date. So fear is, is a bad thing. <laughs> really can take over your life. <laughs> I like the way you said that, Paul. It's, that was profound. Fear is bad. a bad thing. <laughs> it's a bad thing. Yeah. 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 It's, it's interesting, though. It's interesting. It's very interesting to me because I have never felt like, oh, I have fear of that or I am. I, I feel like the exact opposite. You know, right? I've always done things on my own, done things for myself, pushed through that, pushed through this. And it's so amazing when you come to realize <laughs> or get clear on different, on some of the reasons why you are or aren't doing things is actually because of fear. Yeah. So I, I find it fascinating. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. Because this, this, this comment that, that Deb Erickson has made, she said, behind every procrastination or hesitation in your life right. is a fear. So I'm like, well, that's, that's crazy. Like everything that we're procrastinating on or hesitating on is a fear. Like, like what do you mean? So like, there's actually examples out there of um, women who are procrastinating working out. Now, what, what are they afraid of? Like, what, what, do you, what do you mean afraid? Well, maybe they had a bad relationship in the past. And if working out makes them look better, people will start to like them. And then that's ultimate fear because I don't, I had this bad experience in my past. So you may not even connect. And that's just, it's just one example, but there's can be something in your life happening or happened in the past that caused pain that now you won't do certain things in even your business or your coaching business because of not, not that um, in that example is great because it's not that it was the exercise that was necessarily the fear, but what that would mean if you did exercise. Right, the outcome you have, right? Yeah. The outcome you had before is still affecting your life today. Right. And you may not, and I think that's absolutely right that you would not know that because you, you wouldn't even like, I don't think you wouldn't even put those puzzle pieces together. You'd just be like, I don't like exercise. That's it. I, right. that, you know, there's, you wouldn't even look at it more because other people are saying, oh girl, I don't like exercise either. Right. And so then you feel like you're, oh, well good. Now I have a friend who doesn't like it. So let's mm. all not like it together. Right. right. It's so interesting that especially when we have these fears and when we hear about other people doing the same thing that we're not doing or that we are doing it all, it feels good. It feels like, oh, well, good. I'm not the only one. Right. And so then it just keeps us in that cycle to not even look any deeper. Like, why would I look any deeper at that? There's other people who don't like it either. What's so what? It's all fine. Right. Yeah. So it's just yeah. interesting the way fear works on us <laughs> it does and this next comment or, or that um that deb made was something i told cheryl last week and she can verify that i said this before deb said it that everything is based in either love or fear so you either love it or you're afraid of it which you're like well what do you mean by that well uh so i love exercise i love personal growth so i have this this love for things that i don't have any fear for that but other people are, again, afraid of certain things because of, again, what that can mean, not firsthand, but, you know, maybe something, it, it would lead to something that is painful. Yeah. Well, do you guys know what sandpaper is? <laughs> okay. Everybody knows what sandpaper is. Yeah. So when I heard this and we were talking about it, I was like, okay, everything is either based in love or 
And then I felt like massive sandpaper. Like, I just cannot even say it. I'm like, nope, it's not fear. It has to be something else. What are some other things that could be based in, but not fear? Because I think fear means you're weak. So this whole time, I'm like, no, it can't be fear. So I totally understand that it can be based in love, but I want it to even, like, just the thought of the fear part makes me sick. So I want it to be named something different. But there is... Is no other name. We got to the conclusion that there is no other name. And so if you're not doing it because, or if you are doing it um, out of love that or not, then fear is the only other option that you have, which is just, that really feels like sandpaper to me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I'm taking, you know, as those of you who know that I'm, I'm involved in Tony Robbins date with destiny program. So we're really analyzing all of our emotions that we feel and want to feel yeah. and to know that it boils down to just two there's only two real emotions in the world and it's love or fear that's it so you know but i can see why cheryl becomes so successful why i become so successful and why other people have become so successful on this call and in this coaching program is because they love what they do becca do you love what you do two thumbs up caroline do you love what you do Two thumbs up. I mean, everyone, I can keep on going around the room here. Everyone that's got massive success just freaking loves this. They love meeting new people. They love doing health evaluations. They love helping people. They love contributing to their lives. They love feeling significant in other people's lives. They love helping getting people healthier, helping people be, gain freedom in their life with finances and with time. I mean, all of this stuff is, to, like Becca said, total love. You know, just, just there's no fear of that. So it's, it's choosing, do I want to love or do I want to have fear? It's, it's as simple as that. It's not like we got to come up with some kind of program now to fix this. The awareness that you have now that it's either this or this is so powerful that you can decide at this moment, I am no longer associating fear to this. I'm associating love to this. And, and it's just a one second decision that you make because you can decide what you associate pain and pleasure to or love or fear to in one second. So it's super interesting. So let's talk about different types of fear, Cheryl. And uh, this is, you know, there are five known, you know, if you look in the college books, there's five known types of fear. Really though, in Cheryl's opinion, my opinion and Deb's opinion, it's the fear of judgment from others that is the driving force of fear in 99% of the people. So just touch on that a little bit, Cheryl, what are, what are your feelings behind the feeling of being judged? Yeah. So, and that um, comes under the fear of rejection, right? So that's like the, the main thing, but there's so many things in there um, to be ridiculed, embarrassment, humiliation, disappointment of others, um, feeling left out or not belonging. I mean, all of those things really speak to me. And for me, um, I grew up most of my life, a lot of my life being embarrassed, feeling, having that feeling of embarrassment. And so for me, and I mean, I was embarrassed about everything. I'm talking about everything from the clothes I wore to the food that we ate to every single thing I felt as I, when I was younger, very embarrassed. Uh, I can't, I don't even, I probably could talk about it for the next two hours about how embarrassed I was about everything. So I figured out and just having this clarity for me was so, um, because now I go out of my way and I'm like, I'm not embarrassed of anything, right? I'm not embarrassed of anything, but is that really true? I mean, I really live my, and my kids will always say, mom, nothing embarrasses you. But really what else is there in this fear of rejection, right? What else is there? And if I'm not doing something that I'm supposed to be doing that would make a difference for my business, I have to gain clarity on what that is. And that that fear of rejection is the one, um, I think, Paul, that speaks mostly to me, like when I really think about it. And what I would love to do is just say, oh, it's no big deal. It's none of those. None of them. It's all good. It's fine. I don't really care. Everything's mm -hmm. fine. Everything's great. It's wonderful. And then nothing will change, right? Nothing will get better. I will continue to do those things or not do those things that I need to do for my business. 
So you guys have to look at which one of those fears like speaks to you the most. Fear of right. loss, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown, fear of pain, or fear of insignificant. Yeah. So let's go through a few of these. So Cheryl, yeah. you have no fear of pain. Like, so if you're going to go work out and you know that you're going to be super sore at the end of this workout. I love it. I'm all good. There, see what she, she said. You said the word love. I love so it. There, it's, it's love or fear. Now other people actually like, you know, would shy away from it just from the sheer fear of pain that they might feel from doing that. Um, but I that's just because they don't know how good it feels. <laughs> Well, so that's, that's a great point, exciting. but, but yeah. they're also, um, we talk a lot about human needs and that when right. my need and Cheryl's need for growth is so powerful that it doesn't matter what kind of physical or emotional pain we have to go through, we're going to do it because we want to grow. We're obsessed with growth. We're right. obsessed with getting better. We're obsessed with progress. It's not about perfection. It's about progress. But that is, if you got a pen and a piece of paper in front of you, Write the word progress down because when you become obsessed with that, you no longer have these type of fears. You're not afraid of pain. You're not afraid of it. You know any of these things. So fear of being insignificant, that I don't matter, that I'm not loved, that I'm not wanted. You know, a lot of people have this fear. I know Deb Erickson talks about women that have this fear, and what they'll do, they'll do kind of crazy things to not feel insignificant. Well, and I think that's why it's such a big deal for people to be part of a community where they're heard and they're seen. Because a lot of times I think we as women and as moms and as the caregivers, and I know there's lots of guys like this too, but I think we get into this thing where we just go through life and do all these things that we're supposed to do. And we don't ever feel like we're seen. We don't ever feel like we're heard. So to become part of a community, I think that's why that's so important for people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so fear of loss, you know, like I'm going to lose something if I do this, I'm going to lose relationships. So some people will not ever contact their friends or family or anybody because they're like afraid of what they're going to say about this. Um, fear of rejection, we talk about fear of the unknown. So fear of change. So the number one need for the vast majority of humans, like 95% of them is certainty. And the number one value that people have is security. That's, and values are nothing more than feelings that people want to have. So they really love this feeling of security that they're just safe in what they are. So um, anything that is unknown is not safe because you don't know if it's safe or not. So pe people can, can be afraid of, of the unknown. I think that's another big one, but we want to hear from you. So this is going to take a little self-reflection here. And we would love to put you in the comments here, which one of these five fears do you experience the most? Or is there maybe a couple that you experience? So fear of loss, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown, fear of pain, or fear of being insignificant? Well, and I think it's interesting, Paul, too, and as people are writing in there, I just wanted to say, so fear of the, fear of the unknown. It's interesting to me because our minds are already set up like that, right? Because it's trying to help us survive, right? So a lot of times just to just to know that, like for me, I was like, oh, okay, I understand that that's why I don't want to do that. Or that's why I don't want to do this. So that's why I don't like the feeling of being vulnerable, right? It's because my mind's trying to make sure that I'm going to survive. <laughs> and so just knowing that though, helps me to step out and do those things that I would, that I would, you know, not do um, just because I realize it and I have clarity on, on that one. And I, I find it interesting that I'm like looking into each one. So what is like, you know, what's making the difference for me and holding me back on each one of those fears that are yep. there? Yep. So the fear of the unknown, as you mentioned, Cheryl, is, is a big one because every moment, like this moment right now is unknown because it never happened before. So you have this, every moment of your life, there's a certain, there's a, a split second of uncertainty. But what our mind does is it goes back to what we're certain about, which is the past, and knows that on Monday at 3 p 319 p.m., Paul, this is how you feel. This is what you're supposed to be doing. So you go into Groundhog Day. 
You do the same thing every single day, every single week, every single year, because in every moment of uncertainty, you go back to what's known. So we call that living by default. If you have a choice, you can live life by default or live it by design. But the Dr. Dispenza tells us that the only way to um, know the future or know this moment is to design it, to actually write it out, have a vision board and know where you're going, know what your life is about. And then you don't have to worry about this moment being unknown because it's so known to you in your, in your, even in your nervous system that this is how my life's going to be moving forward. And when you get that clear on things, your whole life changes. So I, I see a couple of people that put fear of it's all uh, rejection, Paul. Most it's rejection. And some have had rejection before, but now are working on um, other things, right? So yeah. I find this so fascinating. I do too. And, and I, um, I'm not going to mention any names or anything, but there's people I know coaching personally that have the exact opposite fear that everyone is thinking about. Because when Deb was talking about fear of results, yeah, how will this change my life if I succeed? Right. So if you succeed, what is that going to mean? Well, all my friends are going to hate me because now I'm that, that, that ultra successful person. And, and, and so your friends can do, when you lose weight, when you make more money, become successful, whatever, when you go higher than them, they have two choices. They can either knock you down a couple pegs or they can decide to make growth their number one need and grow with you. What do you think most people do? Knock you down. Knock you down a couple of pegs. And I think that that's so interesting. I think that is so true. Yeah. But there's, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of people that have certainty so high on their list that they don't, they subconsciously don't want to succeed because that would mean change. That would mean less certainty. You know, it's, it's, it's this feeling you have right now that you know you're safe at this moment and you don't want to do anything that could rock the boat or, or, you know, change status quo. So, you know, you need to look inside is, is that something I'm afraid of? You know, am I not making this vision board? Am I not making the story? Because that would mean my whole life has to change. I have to turn everything I have right now upside down and get rid of it to get that other picture. And doing that is ultimate fear. Right? Yeah. I'm sure there's Can a I lot of people watching this recording or watching this live that are like, yeah, that is the most fearful thing ever. Well, and I think it's interesting because like if, if you have to kind of think a little deeper about this, because if somebody said just to any of us, oh, well, how would you like to be successful? I think everyone would say, absolutely. Yes, that's what I want. I want to be successful. I want to do that. I want to, you know, but then once you start thinking about it a little bit more, oh, well, how could that change? What if that changes everything? Well, what if it, and, and I remember Dr. Wallach saying this to me years ago, well, Cheryl, what if it changes everything for the better? And I'm like, well, that's absolutely what's going to happen. We can't get any worse. It's all got to be better, right? And so just, but just realizing that and knowing that, because I think all of us want to be successful, but as we, you know, step into that and do the things that we have to do, each of us have to do certain things to be successful, just realizing that as we go, we're, we may feel a fear. We might have this, we might have that, but we just continue on. We push through those things. And I think having the clarity for all of these fears is like giant leaps ahead of where I was, you know, a month ago, because yeah. I understand them now and I know them and I realize that that's what it is. It's not because I don't want to do it. It's just because my mind won't let me do it. Right. But you will say, you'll agree with me that awareness is changing your life. Oh, absolutely. No, it is the number one thing. Clarity. Yeah. Becoming aware of what you're doing and why you're doing it. And then also having that hope and that belief that, um, that I can fix it and I can change those things, you know, along with all of the tools that we've been given, then it should give you massive hope. 
you know, to understand that your life can be different and you can live your life by design. Yeah. Well, Caroline wrote here that I choose courage over fear. And I just, I would suggest to all of you, including Caroline, Caroline, that you choose love over fear because I really feel that my love for growth is so strong that if someone were to come to me right now and say something about this call, that Paul, that you don't know what you're talking about. Like you're a fool, you're whatever. They're judging me. Because I want to grow so bad, I would be like, well, what do you mean by that? Like, what, what could I have said better? What, what do you think? Now I'm going to listen to them because I want, maybe something they're going to say is going to make me better. So I'm not taking that as someone attacking me or judging me. I want people to judge me. I want people to attack me so that I become certain 100% that what I'm saying is true. If you can point out something that we're saying that's not true, please point it out because we, we want that because we want the truth to be on these calls and for you to, to receive correct information. So it's just, you see the different mentality that most people are afraid of judgment. I love judgment. I want everyone to judge me and tell me what I'm doing wrong so that I can get better. It's the only way we can get better. Well, you keep that up, Paul. I'm not, as, I'm not quite as excited about that as you are. <laughs> I get that, but I just so wanted people just to see Paul. the other side. He can tell me. <laughs> it's not that I have courage. It's just that I, I love growth so much. Yes, I'm kidding. But I do find that interesting. It is very interesting. The next comment is also very interesting that Deb points out in that the reason why people don't join with you or whatever to become your client or coach with you is because they have doubt higher than the benefit of what you are offering. That's it. Because if there's massive benefit and very little doubt, of course I'm doing that. I don't care what it is. Pick anything in the world. When I see big benefit, little doubt in my mind, this will work. But now if the doubt's high and the benefits seem low, and it's all relative because it's just how that person sees things or feels things, then they're not going to buy from you. They're not going to join you. There's something they doubt, though there's a benefit that they don't see. Now, what I want you, all of you to know is that it's an emotion. It isn't because they're, they, don't, they don't know how many milligrams of vitamin D is in B, D, BTT. That is not the reason why they're not joining you. It is don't try to pull out numbers or stats or anything. You haven't told them you're going to feel like a million dollars when you take this stuff because you, that's exactly what happens. Now, yeah. when I tell people, and I literally say this, you're going to feel like a million dollars when you take this stuff because I feel like a million dollars. They're like, well, how much am I willing to spend to feel like a million dollars? Would spend a million dollars to spend it to feel like a million dollars when you tell them it's only 200 bucks the benefits super high and they the doubt super low because they they can see it in me and feel it in me that i really believe you feel like a million dollars on these supplements so um hope hope that helps everyone when they're dealing with clients or prospects and they say no. So what is really happening here? So really, I think, and, and Chill, you can weigh, on, weigh in on this too. What Deb is saying in this call on a high level is that, um, you know, if you, if you have belief in what you're doing and love what you're doing, then you're going to have massive success. And it's, it's, it's just, we're all giving a meaning to, to this thing called fear, this thing called rejection. So when, when, when we say the word, you know, so it's banishing fear of rejection is what the title of this whole class is. So when you, when you, when you hear the phrase um, rejection or the word rejection or uh, banishing the fear or the fear of rejection, what do you, what do you, what does that mean to you? So it means people won't love me. It means, I'll lose friends. It means people think I'm crazy. People will judge me. So it, 
It's meaning something. So what Deb is trying to do is exactly what Tony Robbins teaches to do, and that's give things new meanings. So she goes into this reframing of things, which I love. And I don't know the exact um, line down from Dumb and Dumber, but it's my, one of my favorite lines in any movie at the end where he's like, oh, so I have a chance. You know, it's like, because she tells him she has like, like a one in a million chance of, of him, of her dating him. So the whole thing is, is that um, when they say no, what does that mean? So it could, and Cheryl, you, you have a great story behind this. You were like, well, it means you're stupid or that I don't want anything to do with you again. And you would like push them away and, and look at them differently once they said no to you. Oh, right. I would just say, oh, mercy, you're an idiot. And I can't have you even anywhere near me ever again because you don't understand the importance of this. Really, I honestly had nothing to do with the person if they told me no. Because, right. and, and come to find out, it was my, my fault. <laughs> right? But I didn't know that 25 years ago. I just like, listen, I'm on a mission and this is the most important thing in the world. And if you don't see that, like I wanted them to see it without me even saying anything. What? Come on. You know, after you hear Dr. Wallach, that should be enough for you to jump on this and like really, you know, take it on like I'm taking it on. And I really had to learn that's not true. They, right. you know, everyone's not going to do that. Right. So it's just what meaning do you give when someone says no to you? What does that mean to you? It means means rejection. It means all these bad things. Or does it mean, oh, it's just not a fit for them right now? Right. So again, I go back to that, that time thing that we did a couple of weeks ago with everyone's at 11, 1115, 1130, 1145, and eventually everyone gets to noon. So what I'm, what I get out of people is what time are you at? So when they're like, I would never do that in a million years. You're absolutely insane. This stuff doesn't do anything. Oh, so you're telling me you're at 11 o'clock, but I know in my mind, I believe 100% that they will be at noon someday. Everyone is. So I never, ever take no as no, just not yet. Right. And I, and I, and I love these reframing questions or, or scripts that, that Deb has down here that, um, hey, I get it. Um, if it's just not the right, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. It's, if it's just not the right time for you, it's okay. But can we still stay connected? So Deb, Deb knows that I just got to stay connected with them. What's that, Cheryl? I said, that's important. That's not yeah. what I used to do. And it is so important to do that because so many people have come back later and wanted the products and some something happened in their life, right? And like you said, everyone will be at noon, right? That's true because something will happen, something will happen to them, something will happen to some someone in their family, something will happen in that they want to hear what you have to say, they're, they're ready. They want, you know, they want the things that you've been telling them about. Yeah, I love this one even more though, um, where she says, hey, I'm always giving, I'm always sending free stuff to my clients, great free stuff. Um, is it okay if I include you on that list? I mean, who's going to say no to that? Who doesn't want to get free, great stuff? You know, what is your greatest interest or need? Boom. Now, if you didn't get it out of them in the initial consultation, you'll get it out of them now by just asking that question. Well, right. what I really want is this. And you're thinking, well, good Lord, I just, that's the whole reason I'm here. That, that, that's what 90 for life was going to do. But you didn't address their specific hot button because you didn't know it. But by asking the question this way, what are your greatest interests or needs? They're gonna tell you what it is. So it's, it's, it's just amazing how that, that all works. And, um, and I love this last question. So great last question would be, um, hey, Cheryl, I'm always on the lookout for women who are blank. Do you know any of those kind of, you know, I'm always looking on the, on the, on the lookout for women that are sharp and ambitious. Do you know any, anyone like that? Oh yeah. Well, first of all, they might say themselves. Well, me, I'm sharp and ambitious. Or they're going to be like, oh, Amy, she's Susan. She's unbelievable. She's a real go-getter. She's super sharp and she's very ambitious. <laughs> well, I want Susan's phone number because that's my avatar. So maybe this person isn't my avatar or doesn't want to do this, but 
I want that person to lead me to the person I am looking for. And that is a right fit for me. So I love that question, Cheryl. And um, last but not least, at the very bottom here, um, in the white section, it says, I love this. I says, I get it. This may not be the right time for you. But before we quit today, can I ask you one more question? I feel like I failed to answer your questions or your concerns. What did I miss? What do you need to know in order to make your buying decision? If you can just memorize that sentence or sentences, you will get the sale from that person. They'll join you because you found out what is. So again, it's that balance between um, doubt and benefits. So you got to somehow lower the doubt a little bit and raise the benefits a little bit. As long as you get that 51% in your favor, they're on board. So you got to keep asking great questions until you get there. But you can't do it by using logic and you can't do it by guessing. You have to find out from them what their hot button is, what their need is. And it's, it's not going to be anything, I want to say this logical, but it's, I want to feel better. I want to have more energy. So all of these are feelings. I want to be more healthy, which is a feeling, a feeling of being healthy. I want to lose weight. What does that mean? Well, it means I want to feel thin. I want to feel attractive. So it's all about a feeling that you have not expressed that these products will give you. These products give you the best feeling in the whole world, which is health. Vitality is the number one feeling you can have. I just feel super energetic. I feel great, I'm not sick. I can take on the whole world. That's a fantastic feeling to have. But Cheryl, I know you've done some of these neural tools that Deb mentions. And, and you know, so those of you that are in the program with Deb, you know, Cheryl and I are just obsessed with these neural tools because that's really the meat of the whole thing. I mean, you know, we talk a lot about concepts and things, but what we have to do is actually change your subconscious mind to think the right thoughts so that your conscious mind and your subconscious mind are on the same page. So you keep coming to these classes and you're, you keep consciously thinking this, but your subconscious mind is thinking the exact opposite. It's thinking about the past you or something that's happened in the past. And it's, it's, it's putting all these things together. So that's, that's 97% of your life. 97% of your life is run by the subconscious mind. So these neural tools go to work on your subconscious mind and change that. And if you bombard your subconscious mind with powerful thoughts that are in these neural tools, your whole life will change. So Cheryl, I know you've done a couple of, you did uh, I'm Enough. Yeah, I love that one. That is a really good one. And just, you know, every single night, you can just listen to that. It, I, I think it is fantastic. Listening, if that's a feeling that you have that I'm not enough, if, you, if you've established that that's what's holding me back, then every night you should be listening to that before you go to bed. It's an awesome, awesome recording. Now, eventually you're going to realize that you are enough. So you don't need to keep listening to that because once you, it dawns on you that, oh, I am worth, I am worth enough and I am worth it. When you have that aha moment, then you can stop listening to that and go on to another one. But the power of three is one she recommends. This one, the, the next two, I, I haven't done yet, but I'm going to do them today because they sound super fun. One is called Super Brain Yoga. Has anybody done Super Brain Yoga yet? If you have, put in the chat there. Debbie and then has. The, That's the why best she was one, able to run a marathon. Based on Super Brain Yoga? Yeah. She just ran a half marathon. And yeah, that's because missed, she listened what to Brain tools? Yoga. Oh, well, I'm going to listen to Brain Yoga after, <laughs> after this call here. Get out there and run. The other one that I'm super excited to listen to is called The Summit. So she yeah. kind of walks you through this whole story, which sounds awesome. So I'm looking forward to, to doing that. And it all comes down to everything Deb does and everything we do is for you to say, I can. First of all, that's where the whole thing starts is that there's hope. And, you know, when you go from that green to the red, the first thing you need is hope. And by saying, I can do this, I can build an enormous health coaching business. That's step one. Doesn't mean you will, just means that you, for the first moment in your life, think you can. But eventually you got to move on to this thing 
called I will. Not just can I build this business, I will do it. And a lot of people have got to that level now where the will is taken over. It's not just I can anymore, it's I will. And eventually you get to a place where Cheryl's at, where I'm at, where all these successful people are at. It's just who we are. I am successful. So it's just who I am. It's not that I'm trying super hard or I think I can. I'm just, just who I am. And when it becomes who you are, the world is yours. So those I am statements are eventually everything. And I thought, well, everyone should just start with I am. But I learned through Jeb, Deb's program, he doesn't quite work that way for everybody. They got to start with, but they got to walk before they can run here. So let's just get the I can out of the way. And then the I will. And then eventually you can work up to being able to say, I am worth it. I am super successful. I am capable of becoming a five-star. Anything you want to add to that, Cheryl? No, I love that. I do want to say congratulations to Debbie, though. I think that's so cool that she ran the half marathon. It was it half is. marathon, right, Debbie? Yeah. Super great. All right, we want to hear from all of you. So on this day that we're talking about banishing the fear of rejection, we'd love to hear just stories out there. And we're hoping that you're willing to be open and honest with us and just kind of say, listen, I this is a big problem of mine, or it was a problem of mine and I overcame it or something that... We want to, you know, Cheryl and I don't want to just sit here and talk. We really want to help you and make an impact on your life. So we need to know what's going on and we can help you work through whatever, whatever it is that you're going through. Or maybe it's that you don't understand what's going through. You're like, I don't find new people and I don't know why. So if you're willing to come on board and play with us, we'll get out the shovel and we'll figure out why you're not doing what you know you're supposed to do or, or actually want to do, but you're still not doing it. And it's, again, it's a fear we're going to get to uh, when we start digging to find out why you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Becca's got a whole list. That's all of them, Becca. Can't love them all. <laughs> Stephanie has her hand up, but these that's my, not these even- These are my 40 favorites. All right, let's go to Stephanie. Oh, wow. You unmuted me right away. Thank you. Um, so I shared this, it might've been in our team group, how much this mindset has totally helped me. Um, and I have a feeling I was kind of like Cheryl. I would not eat in the cafeteria at school. I would eat in the bathroom in a stall because I was afraid of people watching that I ate stupid. I would not cross the street because I thought people would be walking, watching me cross the street and saying stuff about me. So I was very fearful, which, which is a struggle because I think I was so fearful, but yeah, I wasn't. You know, bring me a challenge, I'll take it off. Sure, I'll jump on that motorcycle and cast 15 people, bring it on. But go and eat in the bathroom. Really, come on, stuff. That's the issue. So right. I'm, as I'm thinking about that, I'm um, thinking how to apply it to what an issue is on my weekly review, and that I never, I, I need to improve on recruiting people, and. There's some kind of fear that's stopping me from getting to the next step to recruit or make them better clients. Is that a way to say it? I, yep. I never have anything to put in that spot. And it's something that is stopping me and I'm not sure what it is. So you're afraid of um, the fear you've identified as the fear of, 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 of recruiting, of, of look even looking for other people? Or do you look and just, you find them, but you don't contact, you don't say anything to them? I think I'm not sure how to approach them without being pushy. Yep. Mm -hmm. So fear. Or, being pushy. you know, it, it seems like there's so much online anymore that, I mean, I know I get hit on all the time. Oh, hey, why don't you come to my business? Well, hey, blah, blah, blah. it's like, leave me alone. And I guess I'm fearful of irritating people. Okay. So hang on a second. With, that's super important. So that's the whole key to it. 
So something's happened to you and that meant something to you. you. You gave it a meaning. You said that person showed me this and that meant they were, what's the word you use, attacking me or pitching me? What? Yeah, you know, when they, um, I can't think of the word, when they're, when they're out trying to recruit people. Right, right. And they, you know, and they want to be your friend. You don't know who they are. And I'm sitting there going, oh, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. So just stop right now. Well, you don't, but you you have made connections in your brain that you think you know what they're doing, but you're jumping to conclusions. You're prejudging them because they may very well just want to be your friend. Yes. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. But that fear of, re- uh, they're that fear of being pitched something. Pushy. Yeah, she doesn't want to be pushy. Well, because she doesn't like being someone else being pushy to her. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, would you would it be fair to say that there's some people in sales that are super pushy and other people who are not super pushy? Oh, definitely. So which definitely. side of the coin are you on? Are you the super pushy kind or are you the kind that likes to build the relationship first? I'm the try not to be pushy, but have a issue of throwing everything on them because so excited about them learning about it uh, so i need to find that happy middle ground well it's it just it's just a matter of what you're excited about so it, the excitement has to come from getting to know a new person you know and building that connection is where the initial joy and pleasure is is associate you have to associate joy and pleasure to doing that activity and it's literally a conscious decision you're going to make right now that I love to meet new people. I don't well, even care. The, the crazy thing is, is last, oh, it might not have been last week, week before I had, I have literally three pages of cold contacts that I wanted to work on like 85 people. So I have no issue with talking to somebody and meeting somebody new, but getting over that hump to introduce you know, I guess maybe it's because I need to work more on my story, like my story more powerful. No. no, no, there's still a fear in there why you're not. So it's just about asking questions to them and they'll come on board. But, um, you know, we, Cheryl and I associate so much pleasure to just meeting people. Like Cheryl, do you ever have an agenda in your mind when you meet someone, or you're just like meeting new people? No, I, no, yeah. I used to have a big agenda. Yeah. And that's why when they told me no, then I couldn't have anything to do with them anymore. But now I don't have an agenda at all. Like, really, I just really like to meet them. And it always turns into, oh, you're a health coach. Oh, well, can you help me? Can I take your thing so that we can figure out what I need? <laughs> that's, I swear to you, that is what happens. Sure. You know. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, so it's just the love of meeting new people is got to, that has to be the association in your brain. And I love meeting new people and I love getting to know them and seeing what their problems are. So it's not about telling them anything. It's about finding out from them. What are the, we call them hot buttons, but they're problems. What is your problem? I can't come out and say that directly, but that's what I'm saying indirectly to them. Well, I can chit chat for days. You're not forever. asking the right, you're afraid to ask the right question. To... If you want to ask them, you know, of those different scripts that, that, that Deb had here on finding out um, if you, so one of the best questions I ask is if you could change anything about your health, what would you change? Then they just do the selling themselves. Cause now they're telling me, well, I would change my weight. I, I want to lose 20 pounds. Well, why do you want to do that? Cause I feel like I'm fat because my husband doesn't love me because of this, because of that, because I can't keep up with my kids. I can't do this. I mean, I got enough ammunition to fight World War III with by the time they tell me everything. Well, so, and that is, sounds to me a skill set that I need to continue to develop and the words I need to learn to use and not use. Yeah, yep. but Stephanie, I would say let's not, put all of our actions on hold while we're learning, because that definitely is not what I'm saying at all. So you can learn this in 10 minutes and then go out there and practice it. So it's not like, well, let's learn this for two months and then I might go out and start trying to talk to people. No, because here's the whole thing. Stephanie, 
do you really think you can help people with these products? I mean, honestly, do you really, really believe that? Yes. Okay, then that's all you need. And now you're gonna, you know, we'll make a little mistake here and there. I make mistakes all the time. I just keep, I just know in my heart that 100% I will be able to help them and that I need to convey that to them in whatever way I can. And they really feel that. And they feel like if they don't get something from me or if, or if they decide they don't wanna do it, that's okay because that's their choice. And I say that all the time. I say, look, it's your choice. I'm here to help you. I'm here to share the knowledge and I'm here to share with you and help and you know and, and really guide you through this journey of of getting into this better help. And, and so then they're like, oh okay. And and I mean everyone is like that, but you just and for you to learn that it's not hard for you to learn that because really in your heart you know you can help them. So I just want to make sure that you don't think well I have to go learn all this before I do anything. Yeah. Excellent point, Shell. This is 20% strategy, 80% psychology. So it's, it's not well, been a hundred percent action. And who did somebody in our group say, take the L off and earn? <laughs> Who's the L and earn? Take the L off the learn and earn. Oh, well, I love that. <laughs> that's really cool. That's like, that's I've like never my, heard that, but I'm going to well, use I that really a lot. Love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Very cool. But yeah. it's, so how do you feel when someone says no to you though? And, you know, a prospect says, no, I'm not going to join you. Oh, I probably was just like Cheryl. In fact, I banned my whole town of Prague. I don't talk to any of them. I didn't even shop in Prague, the town that we're close to. I wouldn't even shop there because I didn't want to see those people anymore. Because they either said something bad and made something, twisted something that I did into something bad. And that wasn't even in health and wellness. That was with nails. Right. So now I've definitely learned to just slow it off. It's not you. Just blow it off. Let it go. Let it roll like a deck. Let it roll still. But you, so I, think I love should, that. You should what, go back in and just tell them. What is it? I, I am. We got something new. I need to roll it up. It needs to roll off my back like a duck, you said? Yeah. So it's the same thing saying, I don't care. Letting it roll off your back like a duck is exactly like saying, I don't care because it feels like they're rejecting you and it has nothing to do with you, right? I mean, that's what I've had to learn. It has nothing to do with me. I'm just a <laughs> lovely, wonderful person. Why on earth would they say no to me, right? I have to say these to my, myself because it used to bother me so much that I would like never, like you're saying, never talk to them again. Like I could, you, you don't get to be, in my life, no matter what, because you said no to me, they weren't even saying no to me. And they aren't saying no to you. They are just saying no to something that you're saying. I would love for you, Stephanie, to go right back into that town and say, listen here, we have got stuff going on that you will not believe. It's the most awesome thing ever. And you have got to hear about it. Because can you okay, imagine, I'm seriously, can you imagine the self-confidence you would have in yourself by being able to walk back into a situation that you said, I will never go back into again? Yeah. I mean, you feel so much fear and pain. You won't even go in that supermarket anymore. It, and you don't even know if they're there or not. You just think they might be there. Yeah, I was mad at the whole town. <laughs> whole town. And I was ready to go door to door and tell everybody what I had. And it's like, mm -mm. I'm going north. I'm going north. I'm not even going south to that town. <laughs> yeah. So that was what I've had to work on. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully this awareness that this fear and pain is there, that you've associated no to this massive painful thing. So again, if someone says no to me, it just means that I just have, I must not explain this right yet because- <laughs> If you know what I knew, you would not say no to this. Right. So I just, I actually get excited when they say no, because now it's a challenge and I love challenges and I'm very competitive. So now I, I'm all about getting this person to say yes. And I will keep hunting them until they say yes, until they get to noon. I told Cheryl, I said, the only reason I stopped hunting somebody is if they call the police on me. <laughs> and that's something that like me and Becca were talking about 
earlier is that who's going to be in control? Yeah, Am I, I, control I run things. When this I, is my world. Yeah. But I don't go south to town. No, I'm letting them control my emotions and how I'm reacting to exactly. it. Exactly. This is your and time. I want to be the one in control. Yes, you are in control. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Who's who's running yes. the show, Stephanie? <laughs> Me. Yes. I can. Stephanie's I running the show. Will. Yeah. Yes, I can. I am. I will. Yes, I can. I am. I will. Yes. Over, <laughs> over, and over. All right. And awesome. Just, okay. Thank just you. Just so you guys know, Paul would get put in jail for going after someone, and then his call would not be to his lawyer; it would be to that person <laughs> to see if they're ready to order yet. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's exactly what it would be. It'd be like, I get Paul, you get one phone call. Like, I'm calling the person that Put sent me here. me here to jail. <laughs> I want to see if their mind has changed at all. You know, maybe. Oh my gosh, that is super so funny. funny. But that that's a whole. You can see the two, and I'm using an extreme example, you know, just to be funny. But it's just how you look at things is what matters, you know. So you're like what you just heard me say is like, I've never heard anyone say something crazy like that before. I'm trying to get as far on the other side as, as everyone else is thinking so that um, you have a paradigm shift in this and a shift in your thinking that you go from ultimate pain to ultimate pleasure with this and go from the fear to the love of this. And that's when the magic happens. And like Cheryl said, it doesn't take and Cheryl actually went too long with the 10 minutes. It takes one second because that's, it's not about learning any kind of sentence. Like, oh, you know, if you could change anything about your health, what would you change? I mean, it took me five seconds to say it's the association you have. That's the problem, not the sentence. So you just got to change the association in your brain that I love doing this and I'm not afraid of this anymore. But I want you guys to realize too, and I was just thinking of this because I was just thinking, I have I have a really good friend um, for years and years. She's been, um, we've been friends. And so I finally, we talked about joining the health coaching program and all of the stuff. She's like, no. So she kept saying, no, 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 no. And finally she says, yes, I want to do it. And I said, okay. I said, well, why on earth did you say no so many times? Like what? what was the fear that you had? And I had my ideas, right, of what the fear was. Okay, guess what she said, you guys. So I want you to be really, I, I want you to ask the other coaches and the other people that you're talking to this question, like, right, why did you say no? Or what, what's holding you back or whatever? And she said, well, I went on one of your calls and I was like, oh, you did? That is so awesome. I, she said, what'd you think? And she said, well, all of you guys look so good that I didn't think I could be a health coach because I don't look good enough to be one. And I was like, okay, well, I certainly didn't see that coming at all, right? I mean, like, I, I don't even think that has anything to do with anything. We're all on a journey. We are all here to get better each and every day and help others get better too. And so I was so shocked about that, but I just started talking and I was like, listen, you're going to get better day by day. And she said, no, I have a real fear that I don't even look like a health coach. So be thinking of these things, right? Like why would somebody say no to you? It's not because they don't want to do it. Like who wouldn't, I, I, I think this is a fan. They do want to do it. Believe me. Like thousands of people are joining health coaching programs every single day. So just be aware that there could be other reasons than just, no, I don't want to do it. Right. And so oh, just there okay. absolutely is another reason. Yeah. Right. So I just want you to be conscientious of that because that's something that I would have never even thought of. Yeah. That's brilliant, Cheryl. I mean, to ask them that question because you could sit here all year and try to guess, but you would have never guessed that. No. And I, I guarantee you, you, you will never guess what your prospects thinking it yeah. is. And it's probably going to be the exact opposite of what you thought they were going to say. Like Cheryl, Cheryl just mentioned it happens to me all the time. That's why I, I, it happens to me so many times that I'm like, I stop guessing now and just ask them, well, what's holding you back? Yeah. And they'll tell you. <laughs> Once they tell you, you can fix it in two seconds. Right. So um, it's, 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 the, it's the association you have to people saying no to you. I've been signed out because I've been signed another device. That's odd. Okay, do we have anybody else who wants to say anything?
Becca. Hello, Becca. Hello. Um, so what you were just talking about with, with, with your friend and how she didn't think she looked like a health coach. Yeah. When I started with longevity, I was 268 pounds at five foot eight. That first 20 pounds, that progress got me to thinking this stuff really works. Why wouldn't I share it with somebody? So I was 248 pounds when I became a health coach. Now at 168 pounds, I've lost 100 pounds. And in that progress of helping 2,300 people, I'm a health coach. That's 2,300 people that would not have been helped by my progress if I had used that to hold myself back. Mm -hmm. So I really encourage all of you, you know, take, take this, take this serious and every little bit of progress you have to count as a victory a win, yeah. and they add up quickly. Yep. Excellent, excellent, excellent. You know, it's just absolutely you can, you have things to contribute like Becca has, has had and you can make a difference in people's lives. And, you know, it just stop really judging yourself is what is what it comes down to. I think is what you're saying, Becca. Right here. Yeah. Mindset. My, mindset money is about. Yeah, that, that was a big contributor. I mean, and yeah, depression and my body being, you know, so depleted that I had so much stuff going on that once I started getting the nutrition on a consistent basis, all of those things just started melting away and I was able to see what my purpose was and actually do it. And I wouldn't change a day. Awesome. 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 Great job. Okay. We're out of time here, but we'll go, we'll go to Caroline real quick. Cause she always has good things to contribute. So since you have taught us so well that the, thing, the three things that we can control are our thoughts, emotions, and actions, um, when we do this reframing and reframe the meaning, we turn the control, we get to control the thought, which right. will turn into the progressive action, which then overcomes the emotion. So it's all part of those things that we can control and a decision to make that change and Sorry if you don't like the word courage, but <laughs> I love it. It's my it's one of my favorite <laughs> words. I'm just saying. But yes, I I get it. I understand. Okay, so choosing love over fear means loving all of those people that we are here to help and make that massive impact and loving them more than keeping that fear alive. So squashing that fear and charging into love. Um, makes the, the big difference in everyone else's lives, including ours. So um, those are my ending words. That's super great in input. Thank you for that. And so what she's saying is again, that once you decide I'm gonna reframe things, you know, and, and give a new meaning. So there's something you're focusing on that you're not doing. So you're focusing on it. So you gotta change the meaning because it's meaning something. It means something to you, pain or something bad. And when you change that meaning to it, then you change your thoughts, like Caroline said, and your thoughts change your emotions. And when your emotions are super great, you take better action and you actually do the thing. So excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you, Caroline. And thanks, all, thank all of you for coming today. And uh, Charlene, any last words? Yeah, I was just thinking. Um, so each of us can only reach certain people, right? I can't reach the people that um, Kirsten can reach. I can't reach the people that Caroline can reach or Becca or any other, anyone else. So I can only reach the people and talk to the people who I am around and who are, you know, seeking me out, I guess, because everybody wants what we have. They might not know it yet, 
but they do want what we have. So I'm just saying we have to get over whatever we're going through so that we can help them so that we are there for them. And, and Dr. Wallach told me this years and years and years ago too, not one person can do it all, but we as all can help each person. So I love that. And I think it's so important to remember that. So I just want to say thank you to each of you for being here and for really putting in the hard work that it takes. And I know it's hard work, but I know that it's worth it to be able to help those people who are searching for each of us. Awesome, Cheryl. Well, thanks, you, you know, guys. It's, it's hard to Good look enough. in the mirror and say, this is my fault, but it basically what we're saying, it's not the prospect's fault, it is your fault. There's something going on with you inside yeah. that's causing the problem. So you gotta do the hard work and look inside and change what's inside of you so that your life could change. All right. Yes. Awesome job, everybody. Let's so, so unmute the lines. Everyone say goodbye. And we will see you. Well, tomorrow's Team Tuesday. So get together with your teams. And we will be doing uh, Thursday, the leadership lesson of the importance of significant. Cheryl, it is very funny how this all lines up, isn't it? <laughs> it is just nothing. almost frightening how, why would we be talking about significance this week? It's, it's crazy. Amazing. Okay, great. Well, we're doing that. And October 9th as our next graduation. All the stuff's got to be in by what, back October 1st, 7th, 4th? 4th. See, she's a, she's very lenient. I would have said the first, but. Oh my gosh, I have to get my new people going. Come yeah. on. Yeah. So let's get hot on that. It's coming up quick <gasps> and very exciting. We, we There's no better day that Cheryl and I love more than graduation day. So much fun. So we know Shelly Davis will be graduating. That, that's super. Yes, we, know, we know one person will be there. So that is a And super we're going to have to sing happy birthday to her too. We will. We will. I'll bring a cake <laughs> and everything. Yes. Um, all right. Awesome. Have a great day, everyone. All right, you guys. See Keep you. Job. Thank you. Thank Bye-bye. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. God bless you both. Thank you, Paul. Bye.